Welcome to Making Money. I'm Matt McCall. Thanks for joining me here. It is a Tuesday. It's February 8th, flying through the shortest month of the year. And of course, my birthday month. But as we move along, the market's actually quiet today. Believe it or not, they're quiet. I didn't know what to do when I woke up. So we're going to talk about the markets, of course. We're going to talk about Bitcoin, a bit of a rally in the last 24 hours. We're also going to talk about Peloton. I wrote about that yesterday in my daily update. More big news coming out on Peloton. What to do with the stock now? Maybe there's some alternative stocks. And then instead of looking for stocks beaten down, I have a couple stocks trading at highs that you want to put on your watch list. All this and more coming up right now on Making Money. Again, this is Matt McCall. Thanks so much for joining me here at Making Money. It is February 8th. It is a Tuesday. It is a bit chilly here in Baltimore. It feels great to be back in the studio, as you can see, uh, the beautiful studio that the guys built here for me. Uh, so we'll be here all this week uh, working out of the office and then maybe next week back to some warmth. But we'll see. You'll know when you when you log in every Tuesday and Thursday. But we want to jump into the markets here because we've had a bit of a wild ride here, obviously, uh, over, over the last uh, several weeks. And, and we can go back as far as several months. Um, but I'm going to pull up right now a chart of the S&P 500. And I, I think this is important because what we can see over here in this right hand side, that's what's happened the last couple of days. And compared to what we saw here and here in January, it actually looks pretty damn boring. It's, it's, it's really consolidating. And, and that's not a bad thing, folks. It really is not. I mean, it's probably makes you feel a bit better that your portfolio is not up and down every darn day. But the big picture here, what I want to show you is I drew this white line a couple of weeks ago. This was a pullback that we go back to October. We held it in January. I, I mentioned how important that was. And we've held it. We're now back above that blue line. It's a 200-day moving average. So to me, the markets actually look pretty darn good right here. And if we consolidate for even a, another few days or a week or two, that's good. It's kind of the, the, the bulls who rally taking a breather. And I think things look really good right now. I think there's a lot of great opportunities out there in the market. So let's take a look at the NASDAQ composite. And you're going to see a pretty similar chart. The difference is the tech stocks got hit a little bit harder in the recent sell-off in January, and they broke below that low from September, October. They've now worked their way back up. Today, right now, down about a half percent. So not down that much, but the point is, you're going to see a little more volatility when it comes to uh, uh, the tech stocks. And then uh, I just want to mention Bitcoin really quick. Uh, when it comes to Bitcoin, it's been all over the place. And we were down into the low 30s in the last month. We hit almost 46,000 in the last 24 hours, around 44,000 and change right now. I, I'm telling you, I, I have this gut feeling and it doesn't always work, but it works a lot of times. I, and I, I, I felt it for the last week with Bitcoin. And people have been asking me like, now is, is it now a good time to buy? You know, 37,000, 38,000, 39,000. Yeah, it is a great time to buy. I think 50,000 is pretty much inevitable during the month of February, which again would be another 6,000 or so from here. So let's call it 14% from here on the upside and still well below the 69,000 all time high, which I think will be broken to the upside at some point in the next several months. So I think right down here as a long-term investor, I think it's a great time to do some buying of Bitcoin, do some buying in some altcoins. Uh, the, the interest rates keep going higher. Inflation numbers still remain high. And I think that will be very good uh, for Bitcoin and some altcoins going forward over the long term. So I think right now is definitely uh, still a nice time to do some buying. Let's talk about Peloton. And, you know, Peloton's an interesting company because it was a darling during COVID, during the shutdown. Because uh, me, as, as, a, as a founder of a fitness studio, uh, I, we had to shut our doors uh, for, I think, maybe a month and a half, maybe two months uh, total. Because uh, Baltimore City made us shut down our doors. Nobody's allowed in. So that led to a lot of people who are healthy and like to work out to look to alternatives, uh, whether it be running outside, but it's cold in a lot of places. And even some places were telling you to wear a damn mask when you ran outside, which as we look back on, was asinine at the time and is even more asinine now. People, some people still do it though, but you need fresh air, folks. That's how you live. We're human beings. So Peloton became extremely important and, and, and sought after by people who wanted to work out at home. So the very expensive bikes, these very expensive treadmills with the big screens on them, where you have your um, classes streamed to you. I mean, it was great. Not only did Peloton get money by selling the product, the, the equipment, 
They also ha have a really good business of a subscription model because these people, once you pay whatever thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollars it is for one of their bikes or treadmills, how the hell can you justify not paying the 30 to 40 bucks a month for the classes that keep you motivated? So what a great business model. Things were firing on all cylinders. Pel Peloton stock was, was, again, the darling of the pandemic. It was everywhere. You couldn't get Pelotons. Everybody's getting them for their loved ones for Christmas. You name it. But all of a sudden, things started to reopen as they should. And they're reopening more and more. Peloton ran into some uh, PR issues. They had some issues where uh, a child, unfortunately, died uh, on a treadmill, got sucked under. That was also, also very bad PR. So they had a bunch of missteps along the way, and suddenly the stock starts to fall. So let me pull up a chart of the stock here for you, and I'm gonna zoom out a little bit to show you really where we were at. Um, here's where, folks, right here, this is when the pandemic hit. Stock fell below $20 a share. Before you know it, it's at about 175. I mean, look at that run in literally less than one year. Less than one year. What an amazing gain. And but look at this, almost all the way back to that IPO price to where we began. And it actually fell below the IPO price for a little bit this past week. So let me zoom in a little bit more and show you what's been going on. There's been a lot going on here as of late. I mean, just ugly so far since 20, 2021. I mean, just down down here at the bottom is down over 85%. Over 85%. This was nearly a $50 billion company. That is now, it fell down to about $7 billion. Now it's around $9 billion. You can see today, the stock's up 12.8%. It was up yesterday about 25, 30%. So big runs. So let's get into what's going on over the last two days. And more importantly, just uh, uh, there's a lesson here, folks, of looking at this type of company where I invest in trends, uh, mega trends, these big, big trends. A lot of people tend to invest in what I call fads. You know, fads are things that are, are very short term. If you catch it right in the stock market, you could make a ton of money, a ton of money. But fads, if you don't time them right, man, they could hurt. You know, I always think about this fad back in the day. And um, I remember being in a mall, it's probably 10 years ago, maybe even further. And all these little kids had like wheels in their shoes. They were called Heelys. I don't know if anybody remembers those. It was actually a publicly traded company at the time, and the stock went bananas. I think it's bankrupt as of now, uh, but it went bananas because all these kids had these wheels in, the, in these shoes. You knew that wasn't going to last. That's a fad, right? It, it was something that didn't, didn't hang around. Um, another example is Crocs, you know, those ugly ass rubber shoes that, you know, boat shoes that, you know, a lot of people who work in kitchens wear. I, I will say, though, as much as Crocs ran up, it came all the way back down. It's It's got a rebirth. So it's actually done well as of late. Surprisingly, people still wear those ugly ass shoes. I, I, I don't know why. I mean, I'd rather I'd rather slip and fall, honestly, than wear those damn things. So those are fads. Trends are electric vehicles. Electric vehicles aren't a fad because what's going to replace that in any time in the next several decades? Nothing. This is a trend, folks. Mega trend. Artificial intelligence is a mega trend. It's being worked in everything. The internet was a mega trend. Cell phones were a mega trend. Things that are somewhat inevitable to keep growing and can't be disrupted very easily. Peloton can be disrupted very easily by brick and mortar because people are human beings. We like to be around other people. You go back to your gym. That that's obviously you know uh, an old school disrupting this new school. Um, the fact that it's a very high price point. Uh, it keeps a lot of people out of it. So and there's also the motivation factor. There's a, there's a reason people go to gyms. There's a reason people don't work out at home as hard as well, because it's tougher to get on your bike. But if you have a class, you have to go, it works better. So let's go into Peloton. The reason we saw a big jump on Monday is because there was rumors out, uh, reports, I should say, saying that there's a few companies interested in buying Peloton. Amazon was one of them. Um, Nike was one of them. Apple was the other one. Amazon makes sense to me. I could see, I could see them making it work. I could see Nike making work. I think that's actually a, a better fit personally. Um, Apple, I don't see as much, but they get thrown around anytime there's something like this happening. Um, I, I just don't see them being as much. So that's what sent it up yesterday. This morning, the CEO, John Foley, steps down. He will move into an executive chairman role on the board, but he steps down as CEO. 
And the former CFO at Spotify, Barry McCarthy, came in to replace him. Kind of handpicked by John Foley, so I don't know how well that is for the company, but kind of handpicked by him. They also announced about 2,800 global layoffs, and about 20% of all the corporate positions are gone. It's probably not bad. I'd hate to see people lose their jobs, but usually there's too much middle management corporate executives in there anyway, so it's probably good for the company. And one of the leading activists kind of pushing for this, for Foley to get out, the CEO, is a company by the name of Black Wells. And uh, they're an activist, and they own just around a little less than 5% of position in Peloton. They also want the CFO to resign. And they think the company can be sold. They want to sell itself, and they think it can be sold for $75 a share. You can see here right now it's at 34 and change. I don't know if it gets that much. I think, I think it's close to 60 if it does get sold. But $75, and it thinks that it should be bought by Spotify or Netflix. Well, that kind of throws their whole position out for me. What the hell is Netflix going to do with Peloton? That is the most insane thing I've ever heard. Spotify, yeah, you can connect the music to it. But again, if you're in a music of, of, of uh, or the business of music and suddenly the fitness, I, I don't see that. <laughs> Spotify's got its own damn problems right now with Joe Rogan, who I back a thousand percent, but they have their own problem with Joe Rogan. Peloton also came out and they cut their full year revenue guidance. Before it was supposed to be 4.4 to 4.8 billion, now down to 3.7 to 3.8 billion. They expect their connected fitness subscribers about 3 million in, in the coming year, down from estimate about 3.4 million. Uh, but they also said they're going to restructure, and part of that is laying people off. And that's going to yield about 800 million in annual savings. 800 million in annual savings when your revenue is only about 3.8 billion, that's big savings, folks. They're going to reduce their CapEx spending, their capital expenditures, that's how much they spend, by 150 million. This is, uh, they're, they're going to start streamlining things a little bit, reduce warehouses, delivery teams. Perfect, sounds good. Um, and it reported adjusted uh, earnings before interest, uh, EBITDA, what they call, uh, before interest tax, depreciation, amortization, amortization uh, $266.5 million for the second quarter. And that's against a loss of uh, $288 million. So a little bit better, the loss a little bit better than expected. So my point here is that th they are making a change. Um, that my, my, I guess my big, my big problem is it's two-sided. One is Peloton Sustainable. Or are people going to get back to gyms? Do people truly just want to be in a gym or do they want to be home? To me, uh, there's something about being in a gym. And the fitness uh, studio, boutique studio that, that, that I was a co-founder of has been doing record months, month over month for the last four months straight. Record months. So it shows that people are coming. It's expanding right now, adding a whole other floor to the, to the building. It's expanding because they can't keep up with demand. So to me, it's going to be tough for Peloton. And, and I think there is a place for it. Don't get me wrong. There is a place for it. But if people are working from home now, do they want to work out from home now too? Don't they want to go out and see people? What's next? A virtual bar where we all sit around and make our own drinks and talk to people? I mean, granted, we did that over over pandemic. But come on, folks. That's we, we I just don't get it. So from a pure stock standpoint, could Peloton get 60 bucks a share? I think it could. I never bet, though, and buy a stock based on a potential takeover. To me, it's too risky to buy. I think the downside is probably limited to, let's say, $20 a share, but that's 15 bucks from here. Your upside from here is 25 That's not even a two to one. So I would stay away from it. So let's move to maybe some fitness stocks that will do well. And boy, this is, this is kind of sad, actually. I was looking at these stats that uh, how much gain, people, weight people gained over quarantine. It was amazing. I mean, it was something uh, of about 25 pounds. You know, in 1990, uh, there was a re you, you reported your self-reported weight in pounds, Americans. In 1990, uh, men were 180 pounds, women 142. The most recent one last year, men now self-report at 200, women at 162. Uh, the average of U.S. adults, 181 pounds, up from 161. So they're up about 20 pounds each going up. I'm not pointing figures, I'm not body shaming, but it just shows that many of us probably need a gym and we want to get back in the gym. And, and quarantine was tough for everybody because it was tough to move. It was depressing. You didn't have the motivation to get out there. So again, this leads me to in-house, open places where you go work out. The three stocks I'm going to talk about, I've talked about in the past, but I want to talk about it again because I think they look like great freaking buys right now. And here's the first one. This is Exponential Fitness, folks. X-P-O-F. 
And this is a, uh, a recent IPO. I'll zoom out here a little bit for you. Went public uh, back in July. Dipped down to 10 bucks, up to 24, down to 13. Now we're back to 18. It's had a nice run over the last uh, month and a half here. So after the sell-off in January, it's about an $860 million uh, boutique fitness operation. So it's not that big. Uh, but you know, you've probably heard of some of its brands. Club Pilates is the big one. Cycle Bar, uh, which is indoor cycling. Stretch Labs is one-on-one stretching services. Boy, do I need that. Row House, which is kind of cool. It's a high energy, low impact indoor rowing workout. AKT, which is dance based. Uh, Yoga Six, Pure Bar. Probably heard of that. That's uh, you know using the ballet bar. Uh, they also have a thing called Stride, which is a treadmill-based cardio strength training concept. Rumble, a box-inspired full-body workout. And uh, just last year, they added Body Fit Trainer, which is their 10th brand, does strength and functional training. So, you know, the IPO uh, came out at 12 bucks. They priced it below the expectation of 14 to 16. You can see how it did really well after that. Michael Dell of Dell is one of the backers of this company. Last year in 2020, uh, so it was two years ago now, 2020, they did $106.5 million uh, in revenue. Uh, they report uh, earnings the end of February. They're expected that to increase to $149 million, which is pretty impressive. A uh, nice little gain, losing $0.88 cents a share. But where I see the nice big turnaround is coming this year. They're looking for revenue to increase to $200 million and becoming profitable on an annual basis for the first time ever at $0.95 cents a share. Looking at 2023, you have uh, revenue increasing about $228 million and earnings per share estimate of $2.45 a share, folks. That means you're trading at a P.E. ratio of about 7.5 right now. 7.5 forward P.E. ratio. Forward price of sales, we're trading at about 4 right now. So you're looking at some really great value, but you're also seeing growth on the upside. And I got to tell you, you know, these, you know owning, uh, you know, being a co-founder of a of a Pilates studio, I, I see Pilates isn't going anywhere. And with Club Pilates, I don't think it's the best place out there, but it's kind of like the McDonald's of Pilates. It's always going to be around and it's very easy for people to get into. Uh, I, I think it's it, it will do well. Uh, another one is one I've talked about a few months ago as well, um, and this is uh, F45, FXLV, F45 Training Holdings. And I've told you, I, I owned the franchise here in Baltimore and I decided to sell it and open back to the company and open up uh, my own uh, in, in Pilates instead of doing this. But it's about a $1.1 billion company. They all do uh, functional workouts. It began in Australia. It's one of the fastest growing franchises out there. Uh, this one's backed by somebody famous too, Mark Wahlberg better known as Marky Mark and a Funky Bunch. Fastest growing franchise I mentioned in the world according to Entrepreneur, that's pretty amazing. 1,400 uh, franchises have been sold, uh, but not yet open. That means 1,400 more are coming online, which is pretty amazing. Um, you look at uh, sitting on cash, over 50 million in cash, no debt, you have to love that. They're, uh, 2021, uh, they estimate that this year, or that last year once it was all said and done, open up about 840 new franchises, 250 new studio openings. 2020, 82 million sales, last year 135, this year 263, next year 329. Look at that growth, folks. And very similar to Exponential Fitness, they're expected to lose 84 cents last year and reporting at the end of February. But then this year, 73 cents a share. Next year, dollar one. So these are two what I would consider inexpensive, uh, for, for lack of better words, cheap stocks. And again, would you rather own Peloton for a potential Hail Mary takeover, but take that away, the business model. Would you rather own Peloton now or something where the grand reopening of the world is being taken advantage of by these companies as more people get back to normal? I like the latter. I like these two companies. I, I and, and at the at the level they are, they both trade right around $1 billion. So there's some big upside. You're looking at small companies. And there's one more I want to take a look at, and this is a, a Lifetime. And um, you've probably heard of uh, a Lifetime Fitness. LTH is a symbol. Another one that went public in October, rallied up and since pulled back. So Lifetime Fitness, symbol, symbol LTH, about $2.9 billion company. And I don't know if you've ever been to one of their facilities. Uh, they kind of uh, refer themselves as like the four seasons, if you will, of... Uh, um, of gyms uh, because it's really it's a little bit of everything they have you know the juice bars they have a thing for kids they have sometimes climbing walls it's just it's a, it's a massive facility and it's pretty damn cool I'll tell you if there was one closer to anywhere I lived I would most likely be a uh, um, a member of that but they give you an idea in 2019 they did 1.9 billion in sales 2020 obviously they were shut down a lot so that came right in half to 948 million so basically almost exactly in half it cut it. This past year, 2021, looking at back to 1.3, 
2022 this year slightly higher than a 1.9 of 2019 2023 2.4 billion estimates so even better than we were so we're getting back to not only where we were this year a little bit better and even continue to grow they made 15 cents a share in 2019 of course lost money last year uh lost money in 2020 uh, expected this year to make 10 cent profit next year 48 cent profit so again getting back to even better than where we were to me that puts the stock well above where it is right now around 15 dollars well above the all-time high around 23. i think there is just huge freaking upside uh from right here for this company for all three of these companies and you know when it comes to this, I don't know which one will be the winner, uh, if any. Um, and nothing here is a buy or sell recommendation at, by any means throughout the show at all times. But what I will say is that if you like this theme, and to me, this is a bigger trend because the trend of being healthy isn't going away. Millennials like experiences and millennials like to get out and do things. Millennials like to get outdoors. They also like to get into gyms and, and, and experience life a little bit more than the older generation. And again, I firsthand have made good money off founding one. I've been there. I've done it. I've seen it. I've been through a shutdown. I've been through the reopening. There is, uh, if you run this business model correctly, folks, there is big money in it. And as a shareholder, you obviously benefit greatly uh, from that. So, all right. So those are the fitness stocks I want to take a look at. Uh, you know, the next thing I want to talk about is oftentimes uh, I look at stocks, especially in this type of market, folks, that are beaten up, right? Let's buy on pullbacks. And, and that's the best way to invest for me. However, when I'm adding stocks to my watch list, which is a dynamic watch list, it's a living dot, a watch list. It's always changing from day to day. I'm adding some on, taking some off. It gets several hundred stocks right now. And I look through those every day to see if I see opportunities. The one's pulling back to support. That might be a great opportunity. And I add a lot of times stocks that are hitting highs or at least near highs. Not that I'm buying there, but I look for a pullback because I know no stock goes straight up. And when you're seeing stocks that show relative strength in a market like this that are doing well, that tells me something. That tells me that if it does have some type of healthy pullback in the next couple of weeks or next few months, it could be a great buying opportunity. So I went through a list this week and just kind of come up with a couple uh, that I felt were pretty interesting that were trading you know, at or near highs. So let me pull up a, a couple here for you and just show you. I will tell you, there's some overwhelming themes, folks, that I saw. And one was energy. Obviously, with the price of oil doing very well, it goes directly to the bottom line of energy stocks. So Occidental Petroleum, symbol OXY, as you can see here, is one that has a pretty nice chart. Broke out. But again, I wouldn't buy it here. But if it pulled back to 36, 35, around now, maybe I'd take a look at it there. But energy stocks are looking good. I think they're a little overvalued here. I think they're a little overextended. I don't think oil continues to go straight up like this. So I would be careful to, to chase oil stocks here. But on a pullback, they might do well. And I'll tell you why. The reason I think that they continue to do well is if this great reopening of the world, the economy, continues. We get demand back for airlines to where it was before. Demand back for goods and services, which are, are pretty damn high right now, but for everything. We get the supply chain fixed. You know, that requires a lot of transportation. It requires a lot of manufacturing, both which require a lot of fossil fuels. So again, that leads to higher demand for oil, gas, etc. So this is somewhat of a play on a continued reopening. Again, I don't know if I chase this stuff here, but it is, it is, it is a play on that. Another sector that was overwhelmingly jumping out at me were the financials. Here's American Express, AXP, and hitting a new all-time high today, which is fascinating. You know, I look at American Express and I have an American Express card. I've had it for a couple of years now. I love my American Express card. I, 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 it gets me so many damn perks. I think it's like five, six. They may have raised the annual fee. It might be even 650 now or something like that, 650 bucks. And people say, why would you pay $650 to have a credit card? because I get so many perks from it that I get thousands of dollars back from it. I mean, it's amazing the perks you get. And, and, and if you travel like me, uh, you get, I think, 15 bucks a month for Uber, which is what? You do the math, that's $180 a year. Uh, you get so much per month for your cell phone bill. I think it's 10 or 15 bucks a month. You add this stuff up, I get $50 every six months for Saks. And yes, I like to shop at Saks, so I get 100 bucks back there. I mean, it just went, by the time you add it up, it's amazing. So 
I love American Express, and they're really accepted all over around the world, in my opinion. So this this is a company that does really well. And as interest rates go higher, financial firms tend to do better because your margins increase, as well as credit card companies, because they're going to raise the amount that they're going to charge you in interest. So they do better that way as well. And the borrowing costs don't always go up as high. So you're, you're going to see, uh, especially American Express, I, I, I think you need a higher... Uh, credit score to get in. I don't know. I think so. But I, it's, you can see you have a little bit less default than you will on some of the uh, other credit card companies. One other in that in that area I want to show you is uh, CME, the CME group. Uh, CME, Chicago Mercantile Exchange. So they own exchanges, stock exchanges. And I love this because the even though it's pulled back here, you can see it's down 1.6% today. Uh, it's pulled back from an all-time high. This is a play on, on several things. This is a play on continued expansion of uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies because they have a play on that in blockchain. It is also a play on continued expansion of the stock market to millennials, uh, more Gen Xers like myself, even down to Gen Zs, and see how they continue to get involved in the market because you'll see more people investing in stocks and trading and that type of stuff. Hopefully the right way, not gambling, but I, I think this is a play on that. And again, it's, it's, a, it's a financial which should do well if interest rates increase. This one's kind of off, off topic from a lot of things I talk about, but it's Robert Half International. And they're a uh, outsourcing company, a staffing company. And we all know that we're going through what you know, a lot of people are terming the great resignation. We're having a lot of people uh, quit their jobs, um, asking for money, more money, or looking for another job, or waiting for that perfect job to come around. I, I read a stat, it might have been this week and last week, and that for the first time ever, we have actually twice as many job openings than we do people looking for jobs. So there's jobs out there, but a company like Robert Half, they, they go out on behalf of the companies and try to get people to staff it up. So they're, they're, they're in huge demand right now. So again, this is one that regardless of what's going on right now, this, is a, this one may not be a, a, a mega trend, but it's a trend that's going to last a while because we're going to have a problem trying to hire people uh, going forward. Shift gears completely here again, folks. The Raytheon technology, symbol RTX. We all know what Raytheon technology is. It's uh, aerospace defense, also a play on uh, um, airplanes and stuff, two parts for that, for the airline industry. Um, unfortunately, I don't know what's going to happen in, in the border of Ukraine and Russia. I hope nothing happens. Uh, I, I am a quarter Ukrainian and I still have uh, you know, family, so I, I, I hope they stay safe. I have friends that live over there too, so I, I want to see that, that area be very safe. Ukraine's an amazing country. So hopefully nothing happens and uh, fingers crossed, but uh, this just shows us that we still live in a very volatile world and um, countries around the world are always stocking up on aerospace defense and, and uh, Raytheon has been a beneficiary of that and will be for many, many years to come, unfortunately, but they will be for many, many years to come. Here's one that's kind of interesting. This is a small company, a Vera Mobility Corporation, symbol VRRM. You see it hasn't really done much, but it's about to break out to a new high. This, this is a, a bit of a smaller company, folks. This is one, as a matter of fact, I actually had uh, back in the day uh, at an old newsletter. And it, again, didn't really move much, but boys, it held up really, really well. But it provides smart transportation solutions. So this is one of my mega trends. I, I love the transportation solutions that it does. Uh, connectivity, uh, data, uh, intelligent fleets, uh, fleet services. So this is a, a pretty cool play. It's a small company, about $2.5 uh, billion. Um, but what I like about it is you're seeing some nice growth on, on the top line. And uh, as far as the bottom line is concerned, it is a profitable company. Uh, it, this year, uh, looking to make almost a, a dollar a share and trading at 16.5. So you're looking at a P-E ratio of about 16 and a half, 17 for this year. So fairly valued there as well. So uh, Vera Mobility is one a small cap to throw on your list. And then one more I'll throw at you. And this is a uh, symbol L, it's Lowe's Insurance. Insurance is one of the more boring uh, areas out there, but again, insurance companies do well in high inter or increasing interest rate environments. So again, if you want to hedge your portfolio, I want to throw this out at you, that Lowe's is a type of company that could potentially hedge your portfolio against that. So that's kind of where we stand with some stocks near the high, build up your watch list, continue to build it up. I just want to look at the S&P here one more time before we wrap it up. You know, we're down slightly here today on the spiders down less than 0.1 percent and again uh near the high of the session but consolidating that's okay folks we like to see that and you know keep in mind we are going to probably remain in a volatile market here for the time being march is the next federal reserve meeting we're going to see an interest rate hike 
Uh, the odds are it's going to be 25 basis points. And I've been reading so much over the weekend about interest rates getting different people's views. And it's, it's fascinating to me seeing the different views. One camp says we're going to have so many interest rates, it's going to crush the market. It's not priced in. The other camp that I'm in says, well, the market volatility that we've seen over the last couple of months, especially in growth stocks and innovation stocks, the pullback that we've seen has priced in four to five interest rate hikes in 2022. And so if I'm correct, when the interest rate hikes start coming, it's the opposite of buy the rumor, sell the news, but it's priced in. It's like, okay, whew, only did 25. I thought they may do 75, something crazy. Because we think irrational, our emotions get involved. But I'll tell you this, I see so many great buying opportunities out there right now in innovative companies, putting together a nice list for my subscribers. We're gonna, we're gonna put out in a couple of weeks right now, but I'm working on it my team and I, the list so far looks amazing. I can't wait to share it in a couple of weeks. But again, stay strong, stick with the strategy, buy solid companies you think will be bigger in five to 10 years from now and buy them on pullbacks. That's how you make money long-term, folks. Again, I hope you had fun because again, the keys here are, we're gonna educate you, we're gonna have fun along the way, we're going to make you some damn money. I'm Matt McCall, and that was Making Money. Opinions expressed on this program are solely those of the contributor and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of Stansbury Research, its parent company, or affiliates.